Formula One drivers are not only responsible for steering their cars, they also have to manage gigabytes of data communicated wirelessly between the vehicle and the pit crew. ZDNet Australia caught up with Formula One driver Nico Rosberg just before last weekend's Melbourne Grand Prix, where he talked about the technology in race cars, why he doesn't drive in Australia, and how he is absolutely, definitely not a nerd. Kind of. Outside of the racing side, do you consider yourself a nerd? Do you use the internet a lot? Uh, no, I wouldn't consider myself a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> um, although uh, it's been a recent problem of mine to somehow uh, get hooked on it towards the evening uh, with uh, communicating with friends and things because I have a lot of friends that have disappeared in all different kinds of corners. Uh, so we use the internet to communicate most of the time. And so it can be quite tempting to stay on pretty late at night, which isn't quite the right way to go, but that's the only thing. But I would never to? surf, I would never, I don't, I never surf on the internet at all. I don't do that. Not at all. Not at all? No. So how do you live? <laughs> 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 no, I have, I have my websites that I go to, like uh, Facebook, which is like kind of MySpace thing, uh, then whatever, MSN and and the Skype and all these different kinds of things and all the racing websites and the uh, emails and but I would never go in and surf, no. Have you been driving in Australia while you've been here? No. Because uh, I won't either, it's too slow. 100, <laughs> 110 is a disaster. I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna, I'm not gonna go on the streets. You find it hard not to speed? Sorry? You find it hard not to speed? Um, lately it's been a bit more difficult, yeah. <laughs> but um, in, in Europe they're a bit more lenient on that. Especially like Italy, where I drive through very often, um, it's 150 nowadays, so that's already a very nice speed. And 150 plus a little bit, and then you're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Does all this additional technology actually um, help or hinder um, It helps definitely, but to to my driving itself, uh, you mean? Oh, that doesn't it doesn't really matter. It, people uh, exaggerate that a lot. It's not actually such a big help. They think okay, traction control and all that stuff. It, it's not actually such a big help, it is still uh, fully down to the driver. You can't completely rely on it, or, or even, you can't even 50% rely on it, you have to do most of it yourself still anyway. You just said a little while ago, you know, if you do an extra, you do an angle steer or something like that, and guys at the pit and everything immediately, did they go and tell you, look, you just screwed up on that last No, you're on the limit all the time, you're always going to have a bit of something, otherwise you're not on the limit, so it's, it's a very normal thing. So they, they, won't, they won't say anything. Otherwise, yeah, I'd get well annoyed if they would. Sorry, I'm wrong, but I've heard somewhere that the Eurolabs and Dave from the car back to the engineers, but during races, they're not able to make adjustments to your car while you're on the Yeah, that's true. Right. I'm send, but yeah, I'm sending just information back. Right. There's no adjustments being made at all. What they can do is tell me, once I, once I send the information back, they can have a look at it, and then they can tell me to modify myself uh, various things. And the function is just absolutely multiple in the, in the car. It goes all different directions. There's so many buttons and things. And so I, I have to do the modifications myself. And it's amazingly complex, especially in testing. Um, first of all, when you're out on the track, uh, there's sensors in the car. I think I, they said before there's two miles of cables. Is that true? That's impossible. Two miles of, <laughs> there's two miles of cables in the car itself. I don't know where they are, but there's two miles of electric <laughs> cables to measure all various different kinds of things, and, and everything is stored in one, uh, in the memory, whatever, in the car. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just amazing how much, how much data there is to process, and there's an engineer for every specific uh, different area. There's an engineer for the actual driver comment thing, and there's an electronics part, and gearbox, and diff, and engine, and they're ex looking at different parts of all the data. And uh, it's quite funny because it's, uh, whilst I'm driving, it gets uh, projected out straight away. So if whenever I have an oversteer or understeer on track, straight away he, the engineer will see it in the split second that follows on his computer in the in the pits. So that's quite um, quite amazing. The security is very high. They've all figured out individual ways of uh, securing their. Also because the data is always transported in the air from the pit wall to the server and things like that. So there's a lot of uh, Air connections where the security needs they need to pay very close attention that uh, that it's uh, you know fixed fixed nicely. So even I can't get into the internet when I want to because they say nope we can't open a port for you it's too dangerous. So is there a chance that like the Ferrari team or the McLaren team can intercept the signals between? There is a small chance, but you, I don't think it's done because you would really need to 100% get some kind of hacker to to get on the job and and it's not I don't think that's the way to go. I mean there's got to be some kind of uh, Ethic or whatever you call it. On the other hand, um, they listen into radios a lot. 
uh, yeah, a lot of the teams uh, listening to what you're talking on the radio, which often can be a lot of help because you're giving all the information, driver to engineer and back over the radio. So for example, us, we're never allowed to speak about fuel levels on the radio. We always have to say fuel level A and fuel level B all year long and see.